Hello, welcome to Industry Reactions. Industry Reactions is a weekly briefing on industry events, changes, and future trends that impact your business. We're your hosts, Rick Honer and Mark Friedel from Kempoint. You can find Industry Reactions on YouTube, LinkedIn, and as a podcast. For those watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and smash that like button. We plan on discussing issues that impact the global industry and help you uncover new opportunities. We also hope this will provide market intelligence that will keep you ahead of changing conditions. All right, and we'll start off this week looking at some of the macro conditions in our industry. Uh, the first index that we'll cover is the U.S. Chemical Production Regional Index. Um, and for those who may or may not know, this is a three month moving average. So June numbers came out. Uh, so it's a three month moving average looking at June, May, and April. And uh, like many indexes, this, this index has been very positive. It was up over 3% in the month of June. And as you can imagine, that was follow or that that was after some declines we saw in May and April, because those months as a three month moving average factored in some of the declines we saw um, or disruptions we saw in the Gulf Coast due to some of the winter storms. Cool. And uh, in a similar report, uh, the monthly report out from the ACC uh, for US specialty chemicals market volumes rose a little under 1% in June, uh, about the same gain as we saw in May, which, you know, when you compare that to pre-coronavirus levels, um, they're still off around 4% um, from those levels. Though I, I would note that uh, even though volumes are off, I would imagine pricing and margins are painting a lot better picture than the volume picture is. As we've talked about in, in many of our uh, previous episodes, pricing and earnings are off the charts for most producers in this area. Um, also, when you look at the recovery, it's basically been a V-shaped recovery since we hit the bottom. Um, and there was a lot of discussion. I remember going into this, whether it was going to be U-shaped, what, what it was going to look like. Uh, but it's good to see a V-shaped recovery. Clearly, that's much faster for everyone, though it is causing some hiccups in the supply chain along the way. And the next index is the chemical activity barometer. The July numbers have already come out uh, pretty early here. And, and again, this one's more of a forward-looking indicator. Um, and again, it continues to climb. Uh, I think for the month of uh, July, it was up half a percent um, and it was up, you know, almost a percent in June. It's been climbing steadily. It's actually plateaued a little bit. It's starting to, the, 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 the gains are starting to slow down a little bit. So it might be at its peak. Um, who knows for sure. But year over year, it's way up. And Rick, as you said, a lot of these earnings calls were coming in last week and this week. Um, a lot of companies in industry are posting um, record quarters, which we all expected. So, yeah, let the good times roll, I guess. All right. And an interesting story coming out of uh, oil and gas. So uh, big oil, like oil and gas companies have been pushing hydrogen as their alternative or green alternative. But there's still some really big um, obstacles in that in that fight. So BP, Royal Dutch Shell, and Total are all pushing million-dollar hydrogen projects, um, all with government support, as they try to define their future role in a in a world less reliant on fossil fuels. But you know, when I talked about the hurdles, there's a couple of them. First. Most hydrogen is made from fossil fuels via natural gas, which is a problem <laughs> if you're trying to get a renewable uh, resource. Um, so the challenge is to produce it renewably on an industrial scale um, it, that reduces the cost enough that it's uh, a viable solution. Next, which is just a little problem, is that hydrogen is explosive. So it makes it more difficult uh, to store and transport. And last, green hydrogen is really expensive because of the electricity used to make it. And so, um, you know, green hydrogen it is a long-term goal, right? It's for for these companies to to shoot shoot at. But um, in the interim, they'll use carbon capture technology as a way to clean up the gas. Um, so, so long-term goal, but a lot of hurdles that they need to address and clean up. 
I'm, I'm sure we'll get there. All right, and the next story, um, a little surprising to me, um, was really talking about how the U.S. refineries have been missing out on this this boom um, in in oil prices and in, in, in fuel. Um, and I just think that some of these refineries and rigs have not come back online fast enough. But basically, the story talks about is how they have not profited as much as they could have. They've been forced to buy. Um, more expensive uh, oil overseas. Uh, the U.S. has been, you know, trying to mandate and incentivize companies to go into biofuel. And really, the those international flights that require that uh, very expensive and profitable jet fuel just isn't there at all. So, yeah, some of the uh, U.S. companies just aren't benefiting from this right now. All right, and an interesting story here around. Um building a modern car. So, um, you know, when you getting away from oil and you're trying to look at electric vehicles as a potential alternative uh, in the vehicle space, when you start looking at it, the question is how, how many chemical elements does it actually take to, to make a car? And it's 76 is, is the answer. And so you might ask, okay, so what, what, what are we trying to get at? I think at the end of the day, um, it's an issue as, as we've gone through this year, um, sourcing chemicals, short supply, um, supply chain disruptions, the list of potential pinch points grows and cascades exponentially as you add more chemical ingredients there. And so more uh, problem areas uh, for supply and, and producing automobiles. Um, I, another um, factor in this is that it, in the shortness of supply, you can have these huge price escalations, which, you know, when you're trying to get people to adopt electric vehicles, if the pricing is too high, it'll hamper or dampen adoption of those vehicles. So we've got a uh, actually a, a sad story coming out of Texas. Um, you may have already seen this or heard about it, but there uh, a leak resulting from a cap that bursts on a line of acetic acid at Lionel Bacell's Laporte, Texas complex caused caused the death of two workers and injured 30 others. The leak, the good news, the leak has been contained, um, but you know, ultimately this is something that you don't want to see happen in our industry or report. Yeah. And uh, Rick, sorry you had to draw the short straw on reporting this story because it is pretty sad. And not to diminish, in, you know, the people and the lives, but acetic acid, I mean, that's been a product that's been under um, very, very tight supply this year. I know at least a, a two force majeures, probably more. So, yeah, yeah kind of a, a bummer of a story all around. All right, and moving on to Comores, they are back in the news. Um, we talked about how they were expanding a mining operation for their titanium business. Um, gosh, it feels like just a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> in this story, they're selling one of their mining businesses uh, that produces cyanide uh, for something north of 500 million in cash to Droslovka Slo Holdings. Excuse the pronunciation. They're a Czech Republic company. Um, they also had recently acquired uh, a similar sodium cyanide business from Sasol recently. So it sounds like they're going heavy into that. And uh, Comores is now exiting. All right. And then nod to your earlier story or comments around earnings. Um, one of those companies that's been experiencing a, a solid earnings is Huntsman. Um, they've they're doing very well and and plan on using that strong balance sheet to support some bolt-on acquisitions in a recent uh, earnings call company execs said they would quote unquote aggressively pursue m a opportunities so um they're clearly signaling that they're looking for opportunities to bolt on to their business yeah they sold that indorama business a couple of years ago my guess is they have some extra cash i don't know the the terms of that deal, but my guess is they have extra cash and they need to go spend it and they're looking to acquire. And I think they said uh, businesses or products that are more specialized and further downstream. Yeah. All right, that's it for this week's edition of Industry Reactions. Uh, as always, we'll return next week with a fresh batch. Until then, stay safe. Take care. <laughs>